filming this a couple days late because I wanted to finish the last book that I read before I did my wrap up because I didn't want to have to like roll it all over into December. Anyway, I only read three books this month. I read two five stars and one three star. So I'm going to start off with the three star book first. This is The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. I had such high hopes for this book and... I'm not going to say it was like a total letdown, but it was a kind of a letdown for me. The Night Circus is about this magical circus that moves from town to town to town to town. And there is like a challenge or like a game, if you will, between two characters and there needs to be like a victor. I don't want to say too much because it's hard to say anything without like ruining the book. So I'm just going to say that quick little snippet. I rated this three stars. The reason being, I feel like all of the atmospheric stuff was really, really well done. Like, I think the way that she described everything was really great. I had, like, a very vivid picture in my mind. And, like, when the magical stuff happened, like, she wrote it in a way that you could actually picture how things moved and how things looked. And, like, there's one particular part where... One of the characters has this dress and it changes depending on who she's talking to to like match the person she's talking to. It's like outfit. I feel like the way that the author explained all of that and wrote all of that was really, really great. That was super, super well done. The reasons why I ended up dropping stars down was because I didn't feel like I cared for any of the characters. I felt like they were all very kind of flat, like one dimensional kind of people. Um, they... I feel like she tried to give them, like, some emotion and stuff, but it just wasn't really hitting the mark for me. Like, every time it, like, the characters would speak or whatever, like, I kind of wanted more out of them. I just felt like I wasn't getting enough to really, like, care for anyone. There are three characters in the book, Bailey, Widget, and Poppet, that I feel like I probably felt the most for, but even then, I feel like I just didn't get enough of the characters. And then it's kind of hard to say who's the main character, because I feel like they all sort of have equal weight, um, but I guess the two that are meant to be the main characters, Celia and Marco, I kind of, like, I wanted to love them. Like, I wanted to, and I just didn't have enough there for me to really get into their characters. So I gave it three stars. I definitely think it has an audience. Clearly it has a ton of really, really good reviews. And I think it averages like four and a bit stars. But for me, it just wasn't enough like character development for me. And then also I found because it kind of jumps forward and back in time a bit, it took me a while to remember what the last date I was reading was and I had to keep flipping back to to figure out whether I was like ahead in time or behind in time and I, eventually I did catch on but they kept jumping back and forth and the dates were getting closer and closer and I kind of had a hard time remembering where I was in the story uh, because you're following like the same characters I guess. I don't know how to explain it but the time jumps kind of confused me and just there were a couple things about the book that I just couldn't like I just, I wanted to, I wanted to love it more than that. And I was really sad because I was so excited about that book. Totally thought it was going to be five stars and it just did not hit the mark for me. The next book I read is by Kristen Hanna and this is The Nightingale. It took me a little bit longer to get into this than I was anticipating. I think maybe I hyped it up in my mind a little bit too much, but once I did get into it, I did end up quite loving it. This is the story of the Nightingale. It's about a woman who essentially smuggles uh, American and English soldiers out of France during World War II, right under the Germans' noses. Anyway, I feel like because people kept comparing this to All the Light We Cannot See, and I read All the Light back in, I don't know, August, I think, I loved All the Light. Like, if I could have given it, like, five and a half, six stars, I would have. But this one, I felt like I kept comparing the two in my mind, and the writing style is so different. Like, I feel like All the Light is almost poetic, if I can say that. It's just such... It's so beautifully written. And this... It's not, like, not beautiful writing, but it's just not the same. And it did take me a little bit more to get into the characters. And then there were times, obviously, where I loved the characters or I didn't really like the characters. 
but it all came together in the end and I absolutely loved the story and I would caution you if you're thinking of reading All the Light We Cannot See and this one, I would say read this one first because I felt like All the Light kind of clouded this for me a little bit and I was almost going to give it like a lower star rating, but I know that if I had read this before All the Light, I would have given it five stars, and I do think it deserves five stars. It was just like my enjoyment level was slightly below All the Light, but as I said, All the Light, I think, deserved more stars than I was able to give it. I just really, really thoroughly loved that one. But I do think this is worth a read, definitely worth the five stars, and I really, really loved the way everything came together. And last but not least, Bridge of Clay. If you guys want like an in-depth review, because I could literally go on about how much I love this book for ages, and I did, I will put the card up here. The first 10 minutes or so is spoiler free, and then if you've read the book and you want to know how I really, really feel about it, you can watch all the way to the end, and I let you know in that video where the spoiler part starts. Bridge of Clay is about essentially like a broken family. The mother passes away and the dad leaves and it's these five brothers who are growing up or at least on their own for a few years and then their dad comes back into the picture uh, and obviously everything comes together or whatever. I don't want to, I don't want to spoil it, but whoops. But I know that this book got, a t I feel like when it first came out, it got a ton of hate and then now nobody's really talking about it, but I do think it's worth a read. The writing style is very interesting, unique, if you will. It's definitely a bit strange, but I loved this story so much. I cried so many times through this book. My heartstrings were just pulled. There's so many tragic things that happen, but then there was also times that like made me laugh, and there were like really happy stories and things in here, and I just felt like this book was so worth the read. It's quite long, like I think it's almost, I think it's like 560 pages or something like that, and I just thought it was such a beautifully written story, and I just, I loved it so much. I can't say enough good things about it. I know that it's not everyone's cup of tea, but if you can make it through, I think it's definitely, definitely worth the read. So that's it for my November wrap-up. I only read three books. Granted, all of them were almost or over 500 pages, so I did read a decent amount this month, but I kind of screwed myself by adding things to my TBR. I was supposed to read Salt to the Sea, and I didn't end up even getting to it. I might get to it this month. I might get to it in 2019. I'm not sure. Bridge of Clay came, and I just couldn't help but read it, and I think I read it at the most perfect time because I just thoroughly loved it so much. Anyway, I am not going to be putting up a December TBR this month. I've decided I'm going to do Vlogmas, but kind of like uh, a few days together in each video instead of daily clips because I just can't, can't commit to daily editing and stuff like that. But I am going to put together like uh, groupings of clips in a few days at a time for Vlogmas. And during that time, I am also going to be doing the Oh What Fun-a-thon, which is hosted by Mackenzie Lane. She's super sweet, and I really wanted to do her readathon with her. If you go to Instagram, I'll link it down below. It's Oh What Fun-a-thon, I think is the account name, but I'll link it down below, and it has the challenges. And it's a really, really fun take because there's 14 challenges, and essentially whatever you can complete that week, at the end you add up each side and whatever one you have more on, you're either on the naughty list or the nice list, and I just think that's super adorable. So I will be reading the only book I know for sure is A Christmas Carol and I just started Peter Pan and I'm about 50 pages in and absolutely loving it. I think it's great and I can't wait to finish it and I hope I feel the same at the end as I do right now because I really really think I'm gonna love Peter Pan. Anyway, I will talk to you all soon. Thanks so much for watching. Bye!